Bond Law Firm, and I'm here to talk with you briefly about what um, is perceived of what people think is a denial usually when they see it on the Medicaid um, um, Notice of case, act, case Action. It's the Medicare Savings Program. There are three typical Medicare Savings Programs, and the first one is going to be QMB, the second one is going to be SLMB, and the third one is going to be QI1. Now what they stand for are, QMB stands for Qualified Medicare Beneficiaries, SLMB stands for Special Low Income Medicare Be Beneficiaries, and QI1 is just Qualified Individual Medicare uh, uh, Individuals is what it is. Uh, these three programs all have their own income limits and they keep the same resource limits. Uh, where these come into play is if a person is applying for nursing home Medicaid, typically they may or may not be eligible for the Medicare savings programs. And this is the kind of like the distinctions I'm going to go into and what you may see and deal with from time to time. Uh, the two typical ones you're going to deal with are going to be QMB and SLMB. The reason for that is a person that is eligible for QI1, they cannot be eligible for two different Medicaid, pro Medicaid sponsored programs at the same time. Uh, even though these are Medicare uh, uh, savings programs, they are funded by the Medicaid program. So with QMB and SLMB, you can have both of those and you can have uh, nursing home Medicaid, basically. But with QI1, they have to decide, do I want to keep QI1 and get the extra money or do I want my Medicaid benefits? Typically in that case, they're going to accept the Medicaid because that's going to take care of more of their uh, medical issues, we'll say. So on here, I've actually got Appendix 9 that is from the Medicaid Handbook. I've got it right up here. And if, as you see, it has Medicare Savings Program information. And this was updated as of June 1st, 2015. So this is very recent. So this, the first one is going to be QMB, Qualified Medicare Beneficiary, like I was saying. And right here, it's got the income limit for an individual is going to be $981. And the couple limit is going to be $1,328. That's combined income of husband and wife if it happens to be a married couple. <clears throat> As you go down, it talks about what counts as income and what counts as a resource. And something else that's very different is the resource limit is obviously much higher than the $2,000 allotted with Medicaid. So if you see here as an individual, it's $7,280. And as a couple, $10,930. If I keep going down, we're going to skip over to where it has the SLMB limits. Here we have SLMB, which is Specified Low Income Medicare Beneficiary, that I was saying. And their income limit is higher. So whereas with the QMB limit, it was $981. This one starts at $981.01 and goes up to $1,177. So if a person happens to be eligible for the next one, next we have QI1, Qualified Individuals. And the income limit for this one is going to be uh, 1177 actually one cent, and it goes all the way up to $1,325. Now, the reason why these are important for people uh, in nursing homes to know is for this reason. Whenever a person applies for nursing home Medicaid, they're going to test them for the Medicare Savings Program, program as well. Uh, most people, you notice they are over 65, they're receiving Medicare, and that means they're taking out that um, premium each month of $104.90 as of this year and last year as well for the Medicare Part B premium. Well, the upside to if a person applies for nursing home Medicaid and then if they're under that limit of $1,177 for SLMB or even the QMB limit, they're going to start basically getting $104.90 extra each month depending on when the start date is for either one of these programs. So typically if you look on the notice of case action, it may have something on there about Medicare savings program, it'll have you're not eligible, but if it does state that the person is eligible for the Medicare Savings Program, what you would want to pay attention to is the fact that they're going to get $104.90 more each month, and it does take up to 120 days for this to start up. Uh, this is where uh, a discrepancy comes in a lot of the times with nursing homes, because they'll tell the family, 
Well, it's saying on here you owe us 105 more dollars, which would be the 104 dollars and 90 cents extra, and they'll tell you, well, I don't have it. Uh, that's where the notification of it takes up to 120 days for this to catch with the Social Security system before they start paying that extra $104.90 is because that payment is now coming from the state and once the state starts sending those payments to the Social Security Administration they will then add the $104.90 to the person's check. Whatever month that, that that payment starts, even if it's lapsed for a few months, it's going to backdate all the way to that initial month so they should get a second check at some point and then the family can reimburse you if they don't have the $104.90 to pay you up front at that time since their Social Security check will truly be lower than that amount you know, upon the, the initial approval. It typically takes, from what I've noticed, about two to three months. It usually does not take the full 120 days and the longest I've seen it take is probably about 11 months or so. So it does vary from time to time. You do have to kind of get on Social Security Administration about making sure it catches in their system. So if there's ever a situation where it's gone past the four months after the person has been approved, and I mean four months from the month that's on the actual statement, the date of the uh, notice of case, case action, not the actual approval date, if it's backdated to like three or four months prior. Four months from that initial date that the notice is dated, that's when it should start up. So if it's gone past that 120 days, that's when the family or you at the, at the uh, nurse facility would need to contact them to say, hey, this person is eligible for Medicare Savings Program. Uh, is there something we can do to get this rolling? So if you guys have any more questions on this, feel free to call me at the Bond Law Firm, 281-448-4100, or shoot me an email at l.berry at bondlawfirm.net, and that's l.b as in boy, at bondlawfirm.net. Have a good day.